delicious, nutritious, and fabulously fun. Is this real life? Best of all, your comments. That was a real money saver. Thanks, Randall. So did it work out for you? Your hotel tip was spot on. You're listening to the E-Drink Explore Radio Network. But don't just sit there. It's an interactive program, honey. Are you sure this is legal? I don't know. It's fun, though, isn't it? Pick your pleasure. Tweet, chat, post, email, even call us on the telly. Whatever works for you. Our topics today, food, drinks, travel, and a whole lot more fun. So let's pop the cork on this thing and get the party started. Give it up now for our fantastic host, the wonderful and talented Mr. Randall White. I think that's the champagne talking. Hey, a little champagne. That doesn't sound maybe a little early for champagne right now. Eight... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Patty Piper and chiming in with, is it ever really? Well, 806 for me would be a little on the early side. <laughs> okay, but, fine. <laughs> uh, actually, right now, I'm two months without any champagne because I'm on my diet. Mm-hmm. Five more pounds to go. That's it. And then I get to uh, have a little <laughs> champagne again. And our show is on fire today. We've got lots of great stuff for you. A good day as we discuss current Trends in food, beverages, travel and tourism. And, you know, we always keep it healthy and sustainable here at Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. We are broadcasting live from our studios on the lovely California Central Coast. Foggy today. In fact, I'd use wipers on the way in this uh, A little morning. misty. Yeah, but that's what keeps us so nice and comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Can't complain. Hey, straight ahead this hour, we take a look at the honesty levels in cities throughout the United States, men versus women, and other honesty comparisons. A really, really fun study that was done using a brand of tea that comes in a bottle called Honest Tea. Mm-hmm. Honesty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they checked to see if they put a little kiosk out would pe- and, and with a sign saying $1.00. You know, would people do that? Yeah. And the most honest city in America, right here in California. Hello. Round of applause, everyone, <laughs> for being so nice and honest. In fact, the West Coast really swept up when it came to this sort of oh, thing. Good. The East Coast, they just uh, don't have it, apparently. <laughs> anyway, grab we'll be, the tea and run. <laughs> that's right. We'll be talking about that coming up. And a new cookbook mm-hmm. is out with great tips for keeping you fit. And delicious recipes to boot. The focus is for women recovering from breast cancer, but seriously, I've been reading the book and anyone can learn a lot from this. This is far more than a cookbook. And then during our travel deals segment, we pay another visit to Andrea Sachs with the Washington Post. She's a good friend of ours. Her top bargains of the week. She has one for, get a lot of this, cruising to the next spot on earth to experience a total eclipse. Whoa. How much fun would that Very be? Very cool. Because sometimes you have to really kind of trek to get to those spots. But in this case, you're... The lap of luxury. Yes. Okay. I <laughs> uh, like that. Uh, and then our Compass Hour has a lot to offer as well. Uh, the word today is mission. Patty and I will go head to head with our trivia segment. <laughs> we'll also uh, find out about a winery on the Central Coast using... Vines that have descended from California's very first grapes. A group of women following the Mission Trail on horseback. They're doing that currently, and <laughs> they got a landline at the stable. That's how. Uh, wow. That's how we're going to talk to them, and a hyper local restaurant with more goals than just serving you your meal. But right now, it is time for the latest from the Eat, Drink, Explore news desk and Miss Patty Piper. And what's top in the news today, Patty? Well, good morning, all of our Eat, Drink, Explorers out there. Here's what's making news. A new study shows that college students who binge drink are happier. The study published by the American Sociological Association says that's because binge drinking is associated with high status. Students or high-status students, I should say, as opposed to low-status students. Now, because binge drinking at many colleges is tied to this higher social status, those involved have a greater sense of their own social satisfaction. The co-authors of the study stated in an email to Eat, Drink, Explore that the study does not encourage students to drink more, but rather it shows why binge drinking is common in college. All right, all you night owls out there, if you're maybe perhaps still up, (laughs) maybe you're sleeping, (laughs) but listen up. A recent study published by the American Psychological Association shows waking up earlier leads to higher rates of happiness, positivity, and productivity. 
<laughs> that is getting support in our studio. The study also finds those who are considered morning people report feeling healthier. The study surveyed more than 700 adults regarding their mood and health throughout the day. The results show to get the most out of each day with less stress, make a to-do list the night before, and then get to bed early. All right. Nicole Powers is joining us now, and you are here this morning, Nicole, to discuss marketing healthy foods to children. I am. Thank you, Penny. Cornell researchers released a study this week that found when healthy food is marketed the right way to kids, they do in fact eat more of it. The researchers say that although characters like Cookie Monster and Elmo have been used mostly for marketing junk food, using these same tactics will lead kids to choose healthier options in the cafeteria. The study was published in the August issue of the journal Archives of Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine, which also said that this research is a chance for nutritionists and school lunch planners to truly change the poor eating habits of our youth. The study was conducted in upstate New York, where a little over 200 children were given the choice of a cookie, an apple, or both as a part of their lunch. When the cookie and the apple were both left without a label, only 20% chose the apple. However, when the apple had a sticker with Elmo's image on it, 37% of the kids chose to go with the healthier option. Dr. Wansink, he's the lead author of the study. He did not have time to speak with Eat, Drink, Explore this week, but he said in a press release regarding the findings, this is a powerful lesson for fast food companies, food activists, and people involved in the school food service. All right, Nicole, thank you for that. Yeah. Well... And on the topic of school, styrofoam food containers often used for to-go orders in restaurants and cafeterias can take hundreds of years to break down in landfills. The Los Angeles Unified School District decided this week to eliminate the use of styrofoam in all its cafeterias. The school district is joining a growing number of districts that are now choosing more eco-friendly options after pressure from students and parents. Districts in San Diego, Oakland, Berkeley, and Portland are all doing the same. Some critics argue eliminating styrofoam will cost the already financially troubled schools too much money. A new study shows the obesity epidemic is not only causing physical problems, but also mental problems. Obesity can slow cognitive development and mental performance, which may lead to dementia. The study was published in Neurology, and it shows this is likely because of high blood pressure and cholesterol. The researchers say more research is needed to understand the link between obesity and poor cognitive function. They also recommend a healthy diet, regular exercise, and no smoking, Randall White. One more reason. (laughs) That's all we need to stay. Uh, fit and lean, right, Patty? Diet and exercise. We hear it over and over again. Hey, uh, and you know where you can get a lot of great <clears throat> food and healthy food mm-hmm. and local food is at the upcoming Savor Central Coast event, which yes. is the third annual. Wow. It really grew the second year and it's on track to grow again. We're just a month away. It runs Thursday through Sunday, September 27th through the 30th. So many opportunities for locals and visitors alike to experience and learn how great food, wine, craft beer is produced and made by your neighbors and the newest event to be added to the list is called Paso Glow and it's being held Saturday evening at Windfall Farms which is all about sustainability and will feature barbecue from a variety of chefs including uh, Via Creek's Tom Fundaro Local wines, of course, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, here's the really why it's called Paso Glow is the event will be illuminated by the glow of several hot air balloons. Oh, wow. An uh, interesting way to light an event, huh? Yeah, that sounds really fun. I know. So uh, that is the latest on... We'll have a lot of saver updates between now and then because mm-hmm. we've joined a partnership. So uh, it should very be... Very nice. Yes, very happy to be a part of the saver event coming up. All right, just after the break in our health and fitness segment, we're discussing how to get back in the swing literally back in the swing of things after a not literally sorry (laughs) we're not telling you to get in a swing (laughs) all right after a major illness however which foods you should be eating and just general ways to remain in optimum health you're listening to the eat drink explore radio network live from the central coast i'm your host randall white and we're back in just a bit During its heyday in the 1920s and 30s, San Luis Obispo County's Hearst Castle saw many a lavish party attended by the rich and famous. Much of the fresh food served at these affairs was grown either by William Randolph Hearst himself or in the surrounding region. In modern locavore fashion, his vast wine cellar, even during the Prohibition years, was stocked with only the finest vintages. Now you can take part in a similar experience as you sip wine and sample 
local farm-inspired tapas right next to the castle's Neptune pool under the stars. It's part of opening night for this year's Sunset Save of the Central Coast, and this is just one of several food, wine, and farm-inspired events happening September 27th through the 30th. To purchase tickets and for a full listing of activities and featured celebrity chefs, head to SaverCentralCoast.com. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. Take a moment and see if you can guess what I'm doing. I'm getting healthy by walking. Walking daily has tons of health benefits, managing weight, lowering cholesterol and blood pressure, and improving your overall mood. So, whether it's around your neighborhood or over your lunch break, just take a walk. For your free booklet, visit WRInstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. The Will Rogers Institute, since 1936. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. And welcome back, everyone, to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio show. Good morning to you. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by the lovely, the talented, the fantastic uh, Patty Pyburn. Patty, I'm uh, multitasking here. Yes. Just literally two seconds before that music started, I um, sent a tweet. Oh. Uh, which I have never done before. Tweet, uh, yeah, okay. saying um, that about our next guest, you know, because I think mm-hmm. it's really, I think it's a book that everyone should pick up. Uh, it helps a great cause. And fantastic information involved with it. Now, this is our health and fitness segment, a chance for us to take a look at the food, beverages, and activities in your life from the standpoint of overall well-being. Mm -hmm. And we all could use a little of that, right? I think so. (laughs) (laughs) I know I do. (laughs) I I do, too. Or even if you're already on the right path, sometimes you just need encouragement or Mm -hmm. Or tips to shake things up a little bit because right. you know you're kind of get into the a rut right. sometimes, and your diet, your workout routine can really it can get a little boring. So Barbara Unell or Unell, Unell, uh, Unell, yes. yes. Uh, I was in fact Cora just came in and told me exactly yes. how to say it, and I wasn't paying attention because I was sending a tweet. Uh, Barbara Unell, founder of the Back in the Swing 
organization and co-author of the Back in the Swing cookbook is joining us right now to talk about the book and its overall goal. And a very good morning to you, Barbara. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes, nice to have you here. Now, when the book arrived, I brought it home as I always do, and I started thumbing through it. And I found myself in very engaged because it's far more than a cookbook. You have so much helpful information in there, helpful Thank and helpful. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Right. We do. We do. And hopefully the kind of information that is motivating and inspiring um, and encouraging um, and no guilt, no guilt added, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Now, the book is targeted toward women who are sur- who have survived breast cancer, mm-hmm. and you call it back in the swing because of the expression, right? Exactly. I mean, the the um, the book um, um, came about uh, by um, an invitation from Andrews McMeal Publishing um, to tell the story of our nonprofit, national nonprofit, which is back in the swing. And if people want to know more about it, they can go to back in the swing, all one word. B a c k i n t h e s w i n g dot org, um, and we um, we exist uh, to fill this gap for folks after they've experienced breast cancer to help them um, answer the question: Now what? How do I eat? What do I build my bones? How do I strengthen my heart? What kind of exercises should I do? How do I make sure that I'm doing everything I can do to prevent recurrence and also improve and protect my health? We started that organization about 14 years ago, and um, this book, the Back in the Swing Cookbook, um, is a compilation of the latest research, as you said, um, and recipes. And we sort of use that word recipes globally, you know, the the kinds of things we need to know to uh, live well um, every day. I'd love to call it the Back in the Swing Life Book. Isn't that more of what you think it is as you look at it? 100%. Yeah, that's what Mm -hmm. I was going to say. I was going to ask you how much you think that the fundamentals in this book apply to women or men, for that matter, in other life situations, you know, where they may be in, you know, just recovering from some sort of crisis. Absolutely. It's so true. I mean, that's such a good point, and I'm so glad we're talking about that because I think think in this country particularly um, we've we every three minutes someone in this country is in America is diagnosed with breast cancer which mm. is an amazingly startling statistic um, because you think that every single one of those folks is actually asking that question the most important question is how do I get well right um, that's the whole point of treatment and so so there there is an you know almost three million breast there are almost three million breast cancer survivors in this country but there's also every, you don't know anybody who, uh, you know, if they're a woman going to get a mammogram every year or uh, someone who knows somebody who's trying to prevent cancer, trying to prevent heart disease, trying to prevent diabetes, or trying to swing back from it. Um, so uh, that's the fun of this book is the discovery that it really can help all of us to to feel that we can be empowered to take care of ourselves. Um, and and so the the... the Writing is written exactly that way. The recipes are all designed to help us all feel good, mind, body, and spirit. Barbara, you're a journalist, correct? Correct. Yeah, and I can I feel that as I'm reading it because it, it just comes from that type of standpoint. Patty and I are both journalists as well, and so maybe that's part of the reason why I just enjoy reading this book so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a nice compliment. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, that's exactly the concept is is um, that this this information and this soul-giving kind of uh, um, recipes, if you will, for, for all how we live and how to live in a sense of positive, energetically um, sort of healthful, but that word is so scary, right? Healthy, right? Yeah. You know, I don't want anything healthy, right? <laughs> 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 that next chapter. Um, uh, so so we, we wrote the book, and I wrote the book in terms of the research. So again, it wasn't scary, and it wasn't sort of threatening, um, but it, it tends to look at the best side of what we know, that oftentimes many of our doctors, I don't care what kind of doctor it is, whether it's someone in oncology or a general practitioner, they just don't tell us. So there's all kinds of secrets in here, right, guys? All right. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> one of the tricks to journalism that uh, Patty and I have used many, many times over the years is to share a personal story mm-hmm. uh, to bring the reader in and make a connection and also make a point for what the entire story is about. Mm-hmm. And that is done very well with this book because, and I apologize, I can't remember if you're sharing your own story or that of somebody else's, but... Uh, 
after being diagnosed and treated and successfully beating breast cancer, the person is just let go without the doctors have no sort of like, well, here's how you remain healthy. Here's how you don't have a recurrence, that sort of thing. And that brought me into the book. That's it. That's standard of care. I mean, that's that's standard of care actually uh, across all over the world, really, and, and and that's what existed back when I, I, I was asked the question, and that is exactly my story, but it's not just my story. Um, it's it's amazing when I give talks, and I, I talk about this book particularly, or just have given talks over the past decade, and, and people are amazed. They wrote, really? That's what... Well, when I had my heart attack, you know, I went to physical rehab, and I got a whole plan, or when I broke my leg, I, you know, that I got a walking cast, and then I was able to move forward, and they're like, that's what they do? They, no, they can't send you home. <laughs> right. and I'm like, yeah. Maybe they feel like you've already been through so much, you know, that uh, <laughs> the last thing you want to see is a hospital or have another regimen again. Well, exactly, and so this book was written, uh, you know, again, back to that information piece and back to the journalism piece, you know, it's it's as much of a mission about that in terms of, a, of taking a stand on the fact that we individuals just... I call them consumers, you know, just not just patients, consumers need to really stand up and say, you know, I want my voice to be heard. And so I hope people take the book, not just to, if they have a situation where they're in, into oncology or cancer treatment, but anything and say, hey, how about my bones or my heart or, or how about this business of exercise or I have some, some swelling in my arm and bring the book to their doctor and say, look at this piece of research from, you know, the American Medical Association or the Journal mm-hmm. of, of XYZ, New England Journal of Medicine. What do you think about that? So we can work together with our physicians, um, and this book can kind of be their guide, uh, per everybody's guide to say, hey, there's research-based information here. I want to make sure that my doctor knows this. Right. And you know, Patty, you and I are completely glossing over the <laughs> fact that the book is filled with so many great recipes. Right. I mean, that, that is sort of the overarching uh, theme yes. of the book. How did We only have about a minute left. How did you come up with the ingredients that should be used, the combinations, that sort of... Is that what you were going to ask, well, buddy? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, food, what? We all love it. We all need right. it. So what a great vehicle. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. And, and that, that, I think, back to the idea of the recipes and your good question about that, um, is that eating, again, should be a joyful, wonderful, non-threatening experience. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes we think of the juxtaposition between health and, you know, oh, gosh, it's going to taste bad or it's going to be, you know, something I don't want. And so uh, Judith Fertig, who is a fantastic friend and um, uh, the co-author who's written about 20 cookbooks herself, um, developed these recipes and so tasted them all, tested them all, and made sure that, that they fit the taste uh, equation, that they were easy to use, and they fit our, our uh, key factors on being healthy. Well, I can't will. wait to make some of them. Uh, Barbara, you now uh, say hi to Judith Forrest, who's on vacation. Yes. And thank you so much for joining us. Back in the swing.org for more information. You're terrific. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, stick around, everyone. Our business segment is next. Is your city honest? I mean, honest. Be honest. <laughs> is your city honest? We're going to find out in just a moment. Did you know the California red abalone is actually a sea snail? Most wild populations of this delicacy have been destroyed, so restaurants around the world depend on sustainable operations like the Ocean Rose Abalone Farm near Cayucas off California Coastal Highway 1. Owner Brad Buckley is proud to be a part of the Monterey Bay Aquarium's Seafood Watch Program and is listed as an eco-conscious choice by the Seafood Choices Alliance. You can tour the large farm, enjoy a delicious lunch on the grounds, and sip wines provided by local Clayhouse Winery all while enjoying a view of the Pacific and Morro Rock. This is just one of several adventure tours offered during Sunset, Savor the Central Coast, September 27th through the 30th. To purchase tickets and for a full listing of activities and featured celebrity chefs, head to savorcentralcoast.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? 
You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat Drink Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat Drink Explore. The Eat Drink Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat Drink Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat Drink Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break, and we'll be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Thank you for being a regular listener to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Simply send a note to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and we'll be back on the air shortly. A very good morning and welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on this weekend morning. I'm your host, Randall White, and it is time for our business buzz when we take a look at companies that are setting the food, beverage, and travel trends of today. We'll start with uh, stocks. Hain Celestial Group, makers of a wide array of natural and organic food products, including Celestial Seasonings Tea, up nearly 3% at close on Friday to $69.75 a share. Uh, Whole Foods Market, up more than 2% Friday, $97.03. The company in the news this past week for recycling its cooking oil to power a 70,000 square foot facility it operates in the Northeast. So, you know, when you buy those uh, foods at Whole Foods that are, uh, you know, Semi pre prepared that they've made there. They haven't always made them there. Sometimes they'll have like a central facility where some of that food is cooked, like the sushi and stuff. Uh, Constellation Brands, one of the nation's largest wine companies, has seen its shares rise significantly since the end of June. The company closed up on Friday, 32.72, a 1.3% gain. Constellation owns Mondavi, Clos de Bois, Ravenswood, among others. It also has ventured into other beverage areas like Corona Beer and Black Velvet Whiskey. All right. <laughs> How about that, huh? Uh, Bay Area based. Uh, oh, let's take a look at uh, some of the headlines, I should say. A Bay Area-based American licorice company is in the midst of a candy recall. The California Department of Public Health is warning consumers not to eat Red Vine's black licorice twists with a best before February 4th, 2013 on the package after tests found levels of lead exceeding state standards. If you have this candy, 
The public health department says throw it away immediately. Travel spending by international visitors is on the rise this year in the United States. New Commerce Department data shows foreign tourists spent more than $82 billion on travel and tourism-related goods and services here in the state, in the U.S., I should say, uh, so far in 2012, an 11% increase over the same period last year. And finally, how honest are you? How about your neighbors or are you the residents in the city where you live? Well, a new study has compiled some numbers, honesty numbers, based on a pretty simple test. The Honest Tea Company placed unmanned kiosks with bottles of their product throughout various cities here in the U.S. with a sign asking for $1 per bottle. The Honor System. Well, I'm happy to report that most cities were mostly honest with the vast majority of people paying for their beverages. And even better news, cities here in California did very well. Joining us now to talk about the National Honesty Index and how all the numbers collected have been broken down and compared is Dan Foreman. He's director of PR and social media with Honest T. <laughs> Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Hey, uh, nice to have you with us. Well, I'm glad that you could join us. And uh, one question I have right away is, will this continue? Will you update the Honesty Index over time? The Honesty Index will continue. I'm happy to report this was the third year that we've done the Honesty Index, and we think this has a lot of life still in it. There is a lot of different types of people and groups of people we want to measure their honesty with. And so uh, we can't tell you where and when we're going to set up these stands, but I promise you we will be setting up these stands around the country in the coming months and year. You know what I like about the site is fun. If you go to uh, nationalhonestyindex.com, uh, it's you've really designed it in a way that's easy for people to use. And what I like about it is you can compare any two things you want. Like if you want to compare how honest women are compared to the overall population of Oakland, California, or something like that. You know, you can uh, put any two together. Uh, what was your thought behind that? Well, we've done the Honesty Index for several years. Two years ago, we did seven cities over the course of a few days, and that was a lot of fun. And then last year, we went to 12 cities in one day, and that was an amazing experience. We streamed it live on the web uh, that day. It, w it was just a tremendous, uh, tremendously fun time. So when we thought, how can we top it this year, we said, well, let's go to even more cities. So we went to 30 cities this year, and let's measure not only the honesty of that city, but let's tap into various cultural rivalries and current events and um, have some fun with it. Let's track the honesty of various groups of people. You said men and women, but we did hair color. We also did sports stands. So we set up stands outside of various baseball stadiums around the country. We went to a bicycle rally in Sturgis, South Dakota, we went to a stock car race in Michigan, a comic book convention in San Diego. We went around the country over the better part of a week and a half to, to more than 50 locations to gather all the data that we could. And I'm happy to say that, uh, maybe to some people's surprise, Oakland, California, came in with a 100% rating. Nobody stole a bottle. That's correct. Oakland and Salt Lake City both came in at 100%. Uh, we had Honest Tea staff. Honesty team members standing incognito in the back tracking people. And uh, no one stole in Oakland and Salt Lake City. And Boulder, Colorado was 99% honest. Uh -huh. San Francisco, 97% honest. All the way down to, to Los Angeles was 79% honest. Now, uh, oh, L.A. was at the bottom? L.A. was at the bottom. But when you consider the national average was 93%, most people uh, are honest around the country, which is just a, a great... Uh, a great feeling to know. Yeah, no, I'm happy about that. And I'm wondering how you choose the location of the kiosk, like, uh, say, a tourist area versus a financial district. You might see greatly different numbers in the same city. That's a great question. I mean, first of all, we want to say this is not a scientific experiment. This is a, a social experiment where we had a lot of fun uh, just to kind of gauge the pulse of the country's uh, commitment to the notion of honesty. And so we picked locations based on several criteria. One is we wanted to go to more cities than we've ever gone before. So we found uh, a public square or a popular street corner, some area in that city where there was a lot of traffic. So there are a number of those type of locations. And then on top of that, we wanted to find different types of groups of people. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we went to the comic book convention in San Diego. 
or we went right outside of the baseball stadium in San Francisco to get Giants fans. Uh, we went in New York City. We wanted to get all five boroughs. So we found a popular location in each of those boroughs. Uh-huh. We wanted to make sure we were in Silicon Valley, so that's why we went to Palo Alto. So there was a little method behind the madness of where we picked these locations. But at the end of the day, it's all in good fun. It's just uh, to, to get the word out about honesty. Yeah, the Giants uh, fans are exceptionally happy being in first place, so that's why uh, they didn't steal any of the tea. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, right, and Boston fans were 100% as well. Oh, and, really? Uh, DC fans. Yeah, Boston was 100%. The fans, the sports fans in yeah. Boston were 100%. The city overall um, was a little less so, but still very, very honest at 96%. Now, where is Honest Tea? Uh, where, where are your corporate headquarters? We're based in Bethesda, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C., and uh, it's a small office. We have about 30, 35 people in that home office and then some marketing and sales staff around the country. I see. And how did you guys come up with the name Honest Tea? Is it because it's just tea? Well, we actually have a line. We have a line of teas. We have a line of thirst quenchers that are juices, like mango orange or uh, pomegranate blueberry. We also have a line of kids' drinks, Honest Kids. So it started with one, it started with tea, and then as the company grew and we expanded distribution from regional to national, uh, we started adding more varieties to the product line. I see. And uh, the name came from by our co-founder and CEO, Seth Goldman, and his partner, Barry Nailba, of, uh who's a professor at Yale. They are partners in this, and uh, they came up with the name together. Is Honest Tea still a standalone company, or are you part of a larger uh, food group? Last year, we were acquired by the Coca-Cola Company, okay. and as a result, uh, we went. We got national distribution. We raised distribution from around 15,000 outlets regionally to more than 100,000 around the country. Whoa. We were also able to, because of the transaction, uh, transform all of the teas that we use to fair trade certified teas, and we were also able to start sourcing other fair trade certified ingredients. Uh huh. I well, I'm pretty sure my co-host Patty Pyburn's familiar with your product. Every time we mention it, she sort of nods. Yeah, you know, <laughs> my son likes to drink the bottled tea drink, so it's one that he likes. Yeah, so you, <laughs> so you've got honest tea at your house. Yes, we do. And <laughs> An honest <that's> household. <laughs> yeah, and I can guarantee you that uh, Quill and her son would not would have paid for one of those bottles. The <laughs> that's that is right. <laughs> you know, you're starting to see more and more of those. Uh, honor system sort of yeah like fruit stands farm stands right there's one by my house that's a flower stand that's on the honor system i just love that that well based on your numbers the national average being in the 90s 90 percent uh i think it's worth it when you to be able to as a small farmer and not you know having mm-hmm. the ability to uh staff a booth to feel confident enough to put your product out there and know that people will pay for it i love that I think it's great. I think it's a wonderful feeling to know that uh, people around the country value the notion of honesty the same way we do and the ingredients we use, all real organic ingredients. Okay, well, we have been joined by Dan Foreman. He is the Director of PR and Social Media with Honest Tea. Uh, And if you want to check out this, and I... I do recommend that you go to it. It is fun. And Dan, like you said, it's not a scientific study, but it, it, <laughs> it's it, lots of fun. <laughs> we like comparing. We and always... I can't wait to see what they come up with next. What's going? What's the next uh, campaign going to be? Right, because you've raised the bar each year. Yeah. So I assume <laughs> next year uh, you'll either go to more cities or add more categories. But uh, it is the nationalhonestyindex.com. I have that right, correct? That's correct. All right, Dan, thanks a lot, and best of luck to you uh, this weekend. Just have a good time, all right? You too. Thank you both. Appreciate you having us on. All right, so coming up next, Miss Pyburn, mm-hmm. is Andrea Sachs. I don't know if you've had a chance to speak with her yet, but she is the woman behind the weekly Washington Post travel picks. Oh, okay, which- I was say, I, I, I'm... That's why her name is so familiar. Yes. It is one of the Washington Post's most popular Sunday paper Mm -hmm. uh, articles. And, you know, they spend a lot of time researching the different... Great information. Oh, yeah. And one of the picks, I talked about it a little bit earlier, is to take a cruise, and I think it's near Australia, so that you can be right in the path of the next total eclipse. And now you got to start booking. So instead of waiting for it to come to you, you go to the eclipse. Right. And there's like a deal it. on it as well. How do you like that? So Andrea <laughs> joins us in just a moment. It is our popular travel deals segment. 
You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by Patty Piper. And back in a moment. The historic Santa Margarita Ranch, exactly halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles off Highway 101, was founded in the mid-1700s and served as an assistant mission to the nearby Catholic headquarters in San Luis Obispo. The 14,000 acres that make up the ranch today have served a variety of purposes over the years, including grazing land for large herds of Mexican cattle, prime vineyard land, and this fall will once again host the main event for Sunset, Savor the Central Coast, Saturday, September 29th, and Sunday, September 30th. This will be your location to meet some of the top chefs from the Central Coast, as well as nationally recognized culinary celebrities. Several chef demonstrations will be featured, including The Battle of the Bay, hosted by Emmy Award winner, author, and host of Food Network's Chopped, Ted Allen. To purchase tickets and for a full listing of activities from Thursday through Sunday, head to SaversCentralCoast.com. This is Betty White. I know you don't need one more thing to worry about, but listen. High blood pressure can cause kidney damage, blindness, heart attack, stroke. And you can have high blood pressure even if you feel all right. One in seven adults has it, but it's easy to get your blood pressure checked, and you can treat it if it is too high. So don't worry about it. Don't ignore it. Just see your doctor and check it out. For your free booklet, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. This is Diane Lane. If you're thinking of exercising to keep more fit, that's great. But be sure to do it right. Give your body a chance to warm up before exercising and to cool down afterwards. Learn the correct way to run, lift, or to do any of the movements in your program. Don't push yourself harder or faster than your body is ready for. Exercising properly can make you more fit, more relaxed, and generally healthier. Carelessness or abuse can do just the opposite. So be careful. A message from the Will Rogers Institute. WRInstitute.org. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. You've waited all week, and it's finally here. The Eat, Drink, Explore Weekly Travel Deals Extravaganza. I have waited all week, and a good day, everyone. I'm your host, Randall White, and it is time to hear insight from the best of the best, the gurus of bargains, the luminaries, Patty, of budget travel. (laughs) And this week, we are discussing the best ways to get a deal on the cheap. (laughs) <laughs> which is pretty much the way we always do it. Uh, joining us on the show right now is Andrea Sachs. She's the travel writer for the Washington Post's What's the Deal? Travel Bargains. And you can hear her on the program nearly once a month. Uh, today she joins us from her vacation spot in Rhode Island. Hello, Andrea. Hello. 
Rhode Island says hello. Oh, we, <laughs> oh it does. Well, that's great. I, all three of us. Very small place, <laughs> last time, uh, Andrea couldn't be on the show last month because she was in far northern Canada uh, with some taking pictures of polar bears. Oh, my God. Yeah, Is that right? It was, um, I was up in Manitoba. It was actually I was there for the beluga whales because there were 3,000 of them. There oh. just happened to be polar bears around. So, of course, you have to take a picture of them if you see them. Yes. Of course. But the whole area is covered in the beluga whales. Andrea, you're going to have to, uh, 10 minutes from now, you're going to have to log on to your computer and go to our <laughs> website because we will be showing pictures of whales that popped up out of the water right here, just, uh, <gasps> what, 10 miles from our studio. So, Oh, my gosh. I didn't need to, need to go to Canada. I yeah. to California. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. Let's talk. Let's start with your deals now. And uh, the first one is uh, through the Seven Stars Resort. Uh, this is in Turks and Caicos? It is. And it's beautiful. And it's a great deal. And especially because it's... Right now, we're falling into the, air, the period of time when everyone wants deals because summer break is over, kids go back to school. So areas are really desperate to have people come, especially in the Caribbean, because a lot of people are a little scared off by the hurricane season, which is sort of winding down in October or so. But this one is at the Seven Stars Resort, and it's a junior suite garden view room, ooh la la, and it is $339, which is so, many, so much savings because normally it's costing... $565. Ooh. I know, almost sounds cheap. Right. <laughs> right. No, that is a, that's a huge uh, discount, though, on what must be just very luxurious. Uh, yeah, it definitely is. All right. And your next one is taking us, uh, well, you have a couple of choices, right? Mexico, Honduras, Dominican Republic. Yeah, and this is fun. As Randall knows, I always like the ones where they're really creative with their deals. Mm -hmm. And this one is uh, using the London Olympics as their inspiration. So a couple, five boutique hotels in these different destinations, Mexico, Honduras, and Dominican Republic, were giving a discount based on how many gold medals we won, and we did pretty well. And so we brought home 46 gold medals, and so they were giving up to 70% discounts on hotel rates. Uh -huh. I, I know. <laughs> so that's good for us. So, for example, the one that we listed in the column, Casa Bonita Tropical Lodge in Dominican Republic is now starting at $62 a night versus 205 Whoa. I know. Yeah. So, so we have the American athletes to thank for that. I, I mean, I was... I was really doing my best rooting, but if I'd known I'd get bargains like this, I would. I know. <laughs> would have been pulling even more. <laughs> okay, so a lot of times when we land in places, especially like say you're going to Los Angeles, you really need uh, a car, and so uh, National Car Rental has a deal. Yeah, this is a great one too because I know when I travel, I try and figure out how to not have an extra day mm -hmm. of renting a car because it costs so much. But this one, for every two consecutive rentals, two days consecutive, you get a free day rental, mm. and it's good for um, it's good up until let's see, we can let's say September 11th to June 16th, you can rede redeem it, and it's good on compact to full size cars, so you don't have to drive around the clown car. So that's a really good deal. I, li <laughs> I like that. And I, I've been trying more and more now to find cars that are either like hybrid or electric even. I, I want to go to a place and rent an electric car just so I can test it out that way before I buy one. <laughs> that's yeah. a bad idea. <laughs> Hard to find, though. You're so California. Yeah, I actually <laughs> drove one. I drove a Nissan. It was, I started missing gas. And I'm very environmental. And I was like, just give me some gas. It's overwhelmed. <laughs> like, you stare at the battery the entire time. Was it the Leaf? <laughs> um it Nis was a leaf. Nissan Leaf. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful car. It's so quiet. You don't realize it's running. Right. <laughs> and the squirrels don't either. But the whole time I was like, I need an outlet. Like I would just drive up to people's homes and be like, Okay, can I plug my car in? Plug in. I'm, in, I'm desperate. <laughs> you won't even notice me. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk cruising. Right. That's right. Uh, you have some great cruise deals for us. Yeah, this one is great. It's a French cruise line. Very exotic. Uh, very small ships, which is really nice because they can get into ports in areas that the big guys can't get into. Mm. And this one, you can save $500 on South American itineraries. So the one that we listed sounds beautiful. It's from Lima to Valparaiso, Chile, and it's departing in November. Ooh. Yeah. I've always wanted to tour that area, and I'd kind of like to do it by cruising. That would be yeah, fun. Yeah, I think they have some really creative itineraries, not mm -hmm. the, the typical ones. What's the name of the company? Neither Patty nor I uh, ventured to say it. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're going to make me say it? My high school French teacher is going to be embarrassed. <laughs> Compagnie du... I just find Pognon? that if you drop the last three letters of every French yeah. word, you're pretty close. Okay, so it's <laughs> Com Dupo. 
<laughs> hey, let's talk about this last minute cruise that you added. It's a 14 day solar eclipse package to Australia. I've been teasing that Sounds the entire show. So cool. Yeah. Oh, isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. I know. And, I, and this one's great too because it leaves from LA. You can get add on air from other destinations in the States. But this one is $4,449 for a 14 day solar eclipse package to Australia. And the, bon- the, the company throws in two half-day tours to Sydney and Melbourne worth $250. But that kind of pales in comparison to the fact that you can see the eclipse either in a hot air balloon or a sailing vessel. Oh. Okay, yeah. That, <laughs> okay, yeah, such that's a really choice. what <laughs> I'm sold. Over. And then what really threw me, I didn't realize this when I was looking at it, uh, it leaves out of Los Angeles. One of the reasons I have yet to go to Australia and New Zealand is I just can't bear that long of a flight, uh, and not both ways, but at least if by one of the directions I could be on a cruise ship, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, it's a great deal. And they put you in really high-end accommodation. So even if you have a long, bumpy journey, you can just sleep so well in your five-star resort. Wow. You're really not suffering on this trip. All right. Well, I think we have time for about one more. Okay. So you have some uh, flight information for us, Andrea. We do. Um, the two that we listed for this week, one is American has a sale to Central America. And the example that we had was from Reagan National to Honduras for $409, which is about $70 worth of savings. But there are other ones. And again, they're from destinations and airports all around the country. So you could probably find some closer to your hometown. Yeah. And the other one is Aer Lingus. They just can't give away flights to Ireland. Like, they just, they're so cheap, especially over the winter time. And with the Euro crisis, they're really eager to get people over there. So Aer Lingus has sale fares to Dublin. Uh, from JFK, it's $599, which is really good. That is a great deal. I want to go to Ireland so badly, and maybe this is it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I might be, be able to do it. There After is the solar eclipse. There, I should say there are more deals than what Andrea had time to mention. So all you need to go is to the Washington Post travel section online, WashingtonPost.com, and then, uh, or is it WashPost.com? WashingtonPost.com. WashingtonPost.com. And then yeah. just click on travel, and uh, it's updated every single week. Andrea Sachs, thank you so much. My pleasure. Can't wait to speak to you in October. Same here. Enjoy that. So, oh, no, I'll talk to you before the solar eclipse. Yes. I'll wish you well on that journey. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Have a good week. Bye. You do. Hey, this hour of Etrick Explore Radio brought to you by Kelly's at the Grill at Hunter Ranch. Dine under the oaks, surrounded by the beautiful rolling green hills located just Three miles from the 101 on 46 East in Paso Robles. Stick around. Our compass hour is coming up next. The word is mission. And Patty and I will battle it out with our mission trivia. Hope you're ready. (laughs) I am. Lots of great guests as well. We're back in just a moment. And hello, Crush 92.5 listeners. This is my opportunity to thank the team that helps make this show a reality each and every week. We've got, uh, well, Patty Pyburn is at the news desk. Good morning. Today you were joined by Nicole Powers doing radio, and I want to say a big, big, giant thank you to Nicole. She worked for us all summer long. I'm hoping that she'll work for us into the fall. We'll have to talk about that after the show, but she was our intern, uh, one of our two interns, and uh, boy, she just really did an outstanding job. So, Nicole Powers, thank you so much. Uh, Ricardo Teodosio working the video that you're watching, if you're doing it online or via our iPad uh iPhone, smart, all that kind of junk, you know. <laughs> Cora Adama is out in the hallway there of uh, getting all the phone calls on the line, like Andrea, who we just spoke to. And Anthony Renaro is the person that makes us sound so great because actually our voices don't sound anything like this. So <laughs> that's right. Okay, we have a full hour still remaining of Eat Drink Explore Radio. Stick around, everyone. We'll catch you in just a little bit. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore.
Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break, and we'll be back on the air shortly. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. And a very good morning to you. You are listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network on this Saturday morning. And hopefully your day is off to a good start so far. Maybe had a little cup of coffee, some tea, getting ready to explore the beautiful Central Coast. We'd like to let you know that Kelly's at the Grill at Hunter Ranch Golf Course is our sponsor for this 9 o'clock hour. The best kept restaurant secret on the Central Coast. It's open seven days a week for breakfast and lunch. Happy hour daily. That's today. Uh, from 3 to 6, dinner, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Beautiful view of the surrounding rolling Paso Robles countryside. And uh, Kelly's at the Grill at Hunter Ranch Golf Course, located at 46 East, past Airport Road in Paso Robles. You do not need to be a member of the golf course to eat there. So uh, why not just slide on in and make yourself comfortable? <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you had a chance over the last several days, but there have been quite a Let's see, how would I say this? There are really quite some things to see. I don't know. That just didn't roll off the tongue the way I wanted it to. Uh, Out at Avila Beach in Port San Luis there, there have been whales popping up in the water. And our very own Cora Adama got a chance to head out there. Uh, She's the person who makes all the calls so that when you hear our guests on the line, she's the person that does it each and every time. Hello, Cora. Hello, Randall. And so did you take the kids out there? No, I played hooky. They had to go to their sports, and I thought, it's now or never. I've just got to run out there. Right. And so, what, did you see it pop up on Facebook or something? And so, Yeah, I just keep seeing people talking about it and incredible photographs of it. And I thought, I've got to go out there and see. Because the last, uh, let's see, a friend of mine went out on Friday in a kayak with her four-year-old. Oh. And just 40 feet from her, out came a whale. Whoa. And she had her four year old with her and she went, uh, it was exhilarating, but. But scary. Frightening, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so s- since then, that I went out on Thursday, which is almost a week later, yesterday, and um, there were still tons of people. It was gridlock out there. Um, and it was beautiful along the shoreline. All these people were just great energy, happy to see the whales. Stuff. Where'd you go to take your pictures? Right there? On- right there at Port San Luis. Okay. I so- just parked and. We'll share some of those on the Eat, Drink, Explore Facebook page. So it's just facebook.com slash eat, drink, explore. I'll share them from your page because I know that you've already uh, been posting them, right? And Mm -hmm. I love the one of the dolphin. It looks like it's, I guess, naturally, they sort of look like they're smiling. Completely flirting, though. Yeah. Oh, really? Completely. With you? Oh, uh, clearly. (laughs) Clearly with me. Clearly with me. But uh, they were playing with each other, and then they kept seeing the people, and they just kind of get up on their tail and... Yeah, yeah. Just look at you. We have a we have a picture from uh, the Avila Beach Facebook page that we can share online or share if you're watching us online right now of a, a real close up of one of the whales there. You know, um, our Patty Pyburn gave me some information to share with you about this topic. Noah is uh, warning sightseers to keep their distance because they are protected, the whales, and it is a crime to interfere with or harass them. So, like, perhaps your friend on the kayak might have been too close as far as Noah is concerned. You're supposed to stay within 100 yards. Yards. Oh, yeah, yards away. So uh, that's uh, important information if you're thinking about uh, this weekend, heading out there and seeing if you can duplicate some of the photos that we've seen going around on the news and such, you know. Well, I think... I think that would be a huge deal if, it, if they were jet skis. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of these kayakers are just, they're just sort of sitting there floating. The whales are just coming up. And clearly they know there's whales out there. That's why they're headed out there. Uh, right. In bunches. And there's kind of <laughs> nothing you can do if you're on a kayak and all of a sudden a whale pops up. You didn't know what you were a hun- less than 100 yards away from And it, they're right know. there where all those s- sailboats are moored. So they're just floating there with the rest of the sailboards. Right. Or sailboats. Yes. 
So, uh, well, Cora Adama, thank you so much. Sure. We'll be sharing those photos. I appreciate it. And I know you probably got nervous because you could hear the phone ringing while you were sitting here. <laughs> I, I can hear it. <laughs> likely our next guest calling. I'm not sure. <laughs> At any rate, we've got a great hour coming up. It is our Compass Hour. And this week, the word is mission. We'll be checking out some grapes that were brought to California in the 1700s. And now they're making some delicious wine. That and so much more straight ahead. The final hour of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio starting in just a moment. Eat, Drink, Explore Media is your lifestyle information source. Our focus, food, wine, craft beer, travel, and tourism trends with a slant towards sustainable and healthy options. Whether it's hot deals or tips for hotels and flights, an update on what's currently fresh at your local farmer's market, or the latest restaurant and beverage news, we've got you covered from 8 to 10 each and every Saturday morning. Live on Crush 92.5 in San Luis Obispo County and online at Eat, Drink, DrinkExplore.com. Also, check out our new free smartphone and tablet app. Simply search three words, Eat, Drink, Explore, either in Google Play on your Android device or in the App Store on your iPhone or iPad. This free app gives you access to contests, past radio segments, our Facebook and Twitter feeds, and you can watch live video of the radio broadcast while listening to it here on The Crush. Eat, Drink, Explore Media, your source for the lifestyle you love. Delicious, nutritious, and fabulously fun. Is this real life? Best of all, your comments. That was a real money saver. Thanks, Randall. So did it work out for you? Your hotel tip was spot on. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. But don't just sit there. It's an interactive program, honey. Are you sure this is legal? I don't know. It's fun, though, isn't it? Pick your pleasure. Tweet, chat, post, email, even call us on the telly. Whatever works for you. Our topics today, food, drinks, travel, and a whole lot more fun. So let's pop the cork on this thing and get the party started. Give it up now for our fantastic host, the wonderful and talented Mr. Randall White. I think that's the champagne talking. Good morning, everyone. Glad you can join us for the show today. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are coming to you live from California's beautiful Central Coast. So if you're listening up in the Bay Area or Los Angeles, come on down or up wherever you happen to be or over if you're in the Central Valley. Uh, come on over and visit us. We've got some whales popping their heads up out of the water in the uh, Port San Luis Avila Beach area. If you're listening uh, locally on Crush 92.5 in San Luis Obispo County, you just heard us chat a little bit about that. At any rate, this is our Compass Hour. It's a fun spin on the typical talk show. All the guests that we have lined up for this hour of the program are tied together with one word. We call it our Compass word and this week it is mission so uh we're on a mission to (laughs) do a good job for you (laughs) patty piper and my co-host here welcome back to the program patty good morning are you ready so (laughs) i'm ready for my mission yes or or, choose to accept our mission is trivia which we'll be doing in just a second first i want to let you know that based on the word mission we are going to a winery that makes vintage wines would you say that uh Let's see. That makes a vintage <laughs> using <laughs> vines that are uh, that have descended, I should say, from California's first grapes. Also, a group of women following the Mission Trail on horseback right now. In fact, they'll join us from a stable. I understand this uh, morning, and a hyper local restaurant with more goals than just serving you your meal. Uh, they have a mission. Mm-hmm. In the mission, San Francisco's <laughs> mission district, to be exact. Okay, but right now it is time for Patty and I to test our uh, knowledge of the uh, of the word mission. And oh wait, this is not the right thing. So, sorry, I was trying to. I want to. You're click, multitasking. I want to click and, this one. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, it is time for our compass trivia segment. Mm-hmm. And uh, Patty, you have three. I have three. Yes. Questions based on the word mission, and I will let you go first this week. Okay. Take it away. All right. So, Randall White. Yes. Mm -hmm. In our Eat, Drink, Explore theme, I went with exploring. Number one question, what was NASA's first manned space mission? Okay, the first... Hmm. Let me think. First manned space mission. I'll say... It's not Apollo. Uh... (sighs) Oh. I'll, I'll say the Apollo. It was not Apollo. No. And that might have been like their third project. It was Project Mercury. Um, it was back in 
1959 to 1963. It was part of the Soviet Union space race. The first uh-huh. one was Alan Shepard, first American in space. Okay. And that was the first manned spa- space flight, and it was... And it was Mercury, called Mercury. Mercury mission. All right, Patty. According to several online sources, all of them reliable, who is considered the father of California wine? Oh, my gosh. Hmm. He was a priest. Yes. Junipero Serra. Ah, you got it right at the last oh. moment there. <laughs> the first sustained vineyard in California was planted by Father Junipero Serra uh, in 1779 nice. at Mission, San Diego. Okay. Okay, so does this lead to my question? Possibly. I'm going to go with question number three. Okay. What was the first mission built in California? <sighs> Okay. The first mission built in California was, it probably started from the south, so I'm going to say Mission San Diego. And I would say you're right. Aha! You got it. (laughs) Well, on that same, and not all my questions are mission-based, but this next one is, okay, so, well, I mean, they're all the word mission-based. But as in California missions. Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Were California's missions founded by... Franciscan, Benedictine, or Dominican missionaries? I think Franciscan is the right answer, but for some reason I was thinking the Jesuits were first, but Franciscans I'm going with. You're going to go with Franciscans? And you would be right, the (laughs) Franciscan (laughs) fathers, uh, and of course uh, San San Francisco is uh, named for that same general. Mm -hmm. It's uh, St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, right. is where that comes from. And so you're right. Uh, I would have been thrown by that. I grew up in Marin County, and there's a Dominican college there, and it's kind of over by the mission in San Rafael. Mm-hmm. And so and I you've was, connected those. And I've always connected those, and so yeah. I would have said, Dominican, <laughs> but no. Franciscan. It's Franciscan. Okay, so this is my last question. <clears throat> question number three. Yes. How many missions were built and exist in the state of California? All right, so... Harken uh, back to your fourth grade California mission... Right. Um, Segment. So let's see. San Diego, San Juan. <laughs> Mike, uh, I, there's no way I could <laughs> count them all. Uh, I'm going to say... Just a guess. Ballpark. Yeah. 21. 21 is it? Aha! 21 is it. That was a good guess. <laughs> uh, here's the whole thing. I'm kind of a liar. Uh, I yeah, You did some mission research. Well, you know, we have uh, those women are going to be on our show later. Yes, and they're doing the mission trail. They're doing the mission trail. And as part of my host script to set up mm-hmm. their, uh, All the you know, being on the show. Making. Right. I, I mentioned that there's so 21 this missions. this is uh, just a little factoid that I, I want to quickly throw out because uh-huh. during my mission research to find my trivia questions for you, um, the early explorers that came through here in the mission mm-hmm. era referred to the area that we are in in San Luis Obispo is uh, La Cañada de los Osos, Canyon or Valley of the Bears. Of so the Bear, yeah. They came back here to make our San Luis Obispo Mission de uh, Tolosa because it was so abundant, especially with bears. Yeah, interesting. Valley not, of the Bears. Now there's none in. of them, right. Okay, so finally, a non-mission... Well, it in a weird way, it is kind of connected. But uh, okay, so the Mission Ranch Hotel and Restaurant in Carmel, mm-hmm. and you didn't you used to live relatively close area. to Carmel. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the Mission Ranch Hotel and Restaurant in Carmel was restored by former Mayor Clint Eastwood. He's also done some other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think he has like a golf course or something. Yeah, and oh yeah, and then the, his whole Hollywood career. Oh yeah, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so he did it in the mid '80s. The historic property was once the first in California. One of the first in California when it was a convent, a dairy farm, or a brothel. So this is the Mission Ranch Hotel and Restaurant. It was one of the first, what, convents, dairy farms, or brothels in California? Brothel. Oh, you're just going to throw it out there. (laughs) I think. (laughs) My second guess is convent, but I think brothel. Okay, so first guest broth, br- guest brothel, second guest convent, and it was actually number three. It was one of the very first California ah! dairy bars. <laughs> that seems so, so <laughs> ordinary. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Um, I because I've been so into playing our little trivia music. When we got one right, I didn't, didn't do the bell. <laughs> And then, uh, like, for instance, when I said uh, Apollo mission, it should have gone. Yeah, (laughs) but we'll um, get we'll get better at it. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Okay. so, um, yeah, I didn't get around to that. I apologize. Uh, Patty Pyburn. 
But I love our trivia <laughs> and segment. It's fun. It is fun. It's to fun cha- and educational. It's the challenge. Okay, so <laughs> the Mission Dolores, which is in San Francisco, mm-hmm. is the reason why San Francisco's Mission District is called the Mission District. Right. And it is by far one of my favorite places of the city to explore fantastic food very inventive food in the mission district and a nightlife really it's it is the place to go get very away popular. from the tourist waterfront and head into the mission the next time you're there and check out a new restaurant that's where we're headed next just after the break very unique place you could say they're on a bit of a mission you're listening to the eat drink explore radio network live from the central coast this saturday or this uh weekend morning i'm your host randall white we're back in just a moment During its heyday in the 1920s and 30s, San Luis Obispo County's Hearst Castle saw many a lavish party attended by the rich and famous. Much of the fresh food served at these affairs was grown either by William Randolph Hearst himself or in the surrounding region. In modern locavore fashion, his vast wine cellar, even during the Prohibition years, was stocked with only the finest vintages. Now you can take part in a similar experience as you sip wine and sample local farm-inspired tapas right next to the castle's Neptune pool under the stars. It's part of opening night for this year's Sunset Save of the Central Coast, and this is just one of several food, wine, and farm-inspired events happening September 27th through the 30th. To purchase tickets and for a full listing of activities and featured celebrity chefs, head to savercentralcoast.com. Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows, and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.npca.org. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly.
And welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us, we're so glad you are on this August morning. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are coming to you live from California's fantastic Central Coast. So much to do and explore here on the West Coast. And for many people who visit San Francisco, you know they do the regular things. They hit up the city's famous waterfront, maybe catch a game at AT AT&T Park. Head uh, And it's so fun. Ride your bike along the Embarcadero, Fisherman's Wharf, even the marina. And, of course, you can't skip the Golden Gate Bridge. Some travel a bit inland to Union Square and possibly up to the Castro. But it's mostly locals that explore the Mission District, which is really too bad because it has some of the city's most inventive food and by far some of the most vibrant nightlife Boy, if I had some good times in the mission, I got to tell you. Okay, so our mission district, or I should say one mission district place that has really made a name for itself over the past few years is named for two reasons. One, for where it gets its food, and two, for where it is. It's a pretty simple name. It's called Local Mission Eatery. (laughs) And I guess three, what it does. It's an eatery. Uh, It also has far more than just food on the menu. Joining us now... To talk more about his restaurant and the concept behind it is your own Milgram. Welcome to the program, your own. Thanks, glad to be here. Yeah, and so you know, when I was doing research for our compass word this week, which is mission, I really wanted to find a restaurant that uh, fit both our compass word and our general focus of our, focus of our show, which is local, sustainable, healthy, organic. And boy, your restaurant just hit the mark exactly. Uh, how did you come up with the idea first off? I moved to the neighborhood for now four and a half years ago. My wife, uh, we were coming here for my wife's residency at San Francisco General Hospital. Mm-hmm. I was actually not planning on opening a restaurant. I was working on my dissertation at NYU and just fell in love, deeply in love with this neighborhood. And uh, rather than kind of commit myself to the academic life and jumping around, I wanted to try to find a way to plant roots here. I had a real love of food, and particularly locally sourced, handmade food, yeah. and uh, I thought there was a real need for that in the neighborhood, and started looking around for spaces and thinking about a way to offer kind of affordable food, more affordable food during the day, uh, which is why we do counter service during the day to make it more, you know, more, more affordable, and then more formal food at night where everyone can you know, sit down, have a fine dining meal, um, and you know, meet the demands of the neighborhood in that way also. Now, I'm so happy to hear that because many times restaurants that have this local or locavore theme are sort of priced out of the range for the average person to go to on a regular basis. You might be able to do it for a, you know, sort of a special occasion or something, but to eat at a place uh, day in and day out, a lot of these places are just uh, too expensive. And that is probably because it's expensive to get the food. Where do you do your sourcing? So we do our sourcing from all the, from Farm Direct. So I'll go to the farmer's market every Sunday and Wednesday. Uh, my partner, Jake, and executive chef, and our chef de cuisine will go to the ferry building uh, today on Saturday. Or, and then um, we, he'll go, Jake will also go out to Marin to the San Rafael Farmer's Market on Thursday. So we go to the farmer's market at least four days a week, sometimes five. And then Marikita Farms in Watsonville will deliver to us. Oh. Um, and that's the whole range. We really, literally, we don't buy any of our produce through a purveyor at all. Our fish comes from a guy, uh, Joe, from Water to Table, who goes to the boats and picks up the fish himself from the boats and brings them straight to us. Now, that's fresh fish. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. So do you think operating a restaurant such as yours is easier for you to do because of your location there in the mission. You have access year-round to enough produce and fish and stuff to create a menu? What I'd say is that it it is uh, easier than if you were in New York trying to do the same thing, but it's still always easier to have people deliver food to you than go to the farmer's market to get food yourself. So um, we... But from the ways that one can, could source their produce locally, we definitely do it the harder way. It is easier to call one purveyor, and they can get everything for you. You know, we literally take a truck, you know, pick up a truck to the farmer's market, go to each stand, load it up. You know, I, I go with my two kids with me and a cart to pull all the crates around. So it's the, it is the harder way to do it, but it's the only way we'd want to do, which is keeping the relationship direct, getting as much money as we can directly to the farmer also with us. I like that. Now, people that listen to this show, your own, love to learn. I think that's why they listen, uh, part of it, you know. Uh, And you offer 
labs on your website uh, there's an entire tab you can click on for labs and if i end, if i remember correctly you offer them on sunday what are your labs exactly so our labs uh, are really ways to make sure people bring the you know the skills that we use at the restaurant back to their home i mean ultimately you can't eat that many meals out you know independent of price it's still it's a trip to go out and most people are going to do most you know will do their primary eating at home so really to try to get it that people can eat really well at home and know what to do with the food at the farmer's market. To be honest, we, we've not been great lately on the last. We opened up our second restaurant um, five months ago, and we're in the process of opening up a market in the neighborhood also that will really work harder to get good food into people's homes. Right. So we've been a bit stretched on staff to do the labs. We still run our cookbook library, though, which is uh, quite a, I know we probably have now 250 volumes uh, on our bookshelf for people to browse while they're at the restaurant. That's fantastic. A cookbook library, and can people check them out? Yeah, they can. We, we don't do it at Tuttery where people where people are pretty uh, slow about bringing them back, but yeah. we'd love for people to do it, you know, and really, and we, we have a pretty open policy in terms of you know, getting tomato sauce on it as part of, part of the deal. We get it that we want people to cook with those books. We were just talking about the honor system earlier in the show, and uh, most people are honest when it comes to things like that, so I'm glad to see that your library system is working that way. Even if people are slow about it, they still have the intention to bring it back, right? Yeah, yeah, they get back <laughs> on the shelf. Okay, so um, on the con- concept of labs, I, I find this incredibly unique on your restaurant's part, and one of the reasons why I enjoy uh, sharing with our listeners the fact that your restaurant exists is because so many chefs and restaurants are incredibly proprietary when it comes to the ingredients they use, the methods it, they use, because they're afraid that you'll take it home and then you won't come eat at the restaurant. And you're coming at it from a completely different angle. You want people to use fresh local ingredients ingredients when they're not eating at your restaurant. You want to show them how they can make the ingredients the way that they had them in your restaurant. It just it turns the whole paradigm on its head. Yeah, I mean, if I used to go out to eat and, and uh, would, would be the diner asking the server a ton of questions and then ask if I could go look into the kitchen. So when we designed Local Mission Eatery, uh, we really, I wanted it to be a place where the uncurious would learn a lot and the curious really would take a ton home with them. And we are walk-in refrigerator has a huge window so you can see all of our products and the kitchen oh. when people like say open kitchen this is the if you're sitting at this kitchen you can see everything being cooked without you know, there's nothing you can't see. I mean, you can even see into the dish room you can see the line you can see where all the cooking is done um and same so people take it home it was ultimately you'd have to work incredibly hard to take home what we do at the restaurant we make everything from scratch we get animals and whole and butcher them there our creme fraiche is made from scratch our yogurt is made from scratch our sauces you know will take 36 hours to get them to their final product so it's it's both this ability to learn and take some of it home and also realize how hard some of it is and you know you just you have to come out to a restaurant to get that quality of food plus you'd have to build a pretty bomb kitchen (laughs) in order to (laughs) to make that happen. Now, where are you located in the mission? We're on 24th Street between Folsom and Shotwell. Uh, That's local mission eatery. And then local corner is on the corner of 23rd and Bryant, which is where I live also. Okay. So you could take uh, 24th the 24th Street BART stop, right? Yeah. And then just uh, walk down um, to where you are. And then uh, there's a bar right around there, Shotwell's, right? Isn't too far away? Yeah, Shotwell's is just... uh, just north on Shotwell, a few blocks. Yeah, I love that place. They make yeah. a beer ice cream, a stout beer ice cream that uh, they hand make there sometimes, and they'll offer it to you on a on a hot day. And the mission is the Sunshine District there in San Francisco. So, Yaron Milgram and the local Mission Eatery, thank you so much for being on the show, and best of luck with the uh, two new ventures you have going on. Thanks so much. All right, we'll come by and say hi sometime soon. All right, so just ahead. We'll delve further into our Compass Word mission and learn some fun California history along the way as we meet a vintner who is rediscovering California's original mission grape. The ones planted, as we learned during trivia, by California's father, Unipera Serra. All right, you're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network live from the Central Coast. I'm your host, Randall White, and we're back after this short break. Did you know the California red abalone is actually a sea snail? Most wild populations of this delicacy have been destroyed, so restaurants around the world depend on sustainable operations 
like the Ocean Rose Abalone Farm near Cayucas off California Coastal Highway 1. Owner Brad Buckley is proud to be a part of the Monterey Bay Aquarium's Seafood Watch Program and is listed as an eco-conscious choice by the Seafood Choices Alliance. You can tour the large farm, enjoy a delicious lunch on the grounds, and sip wines provided by local Clayhouse Winery all while enjoying a view of the Pacific and Morro Rock. This is just one of several adventure tours offered during Sunset, Savor the Central Coast, September 27th through the 30th. To purchase tickets and for a full listing of activities and featured celebrity chefs, head to savorcentralcoast.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Thank you for being a regular listener to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Simply send a note to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Here now is your fabulous host, Mr. Randall White. And good morning, everyone. Glad you can join us. Are you still stretching? I could not sleep last night. I don't know what it was. The dogs were itching and the I just, I don't know. My shoulder was bugging me because I heard it a couple of weeks ago and it's getting better. But last night I've decided to stop taking the pain medication and I realized, well, maybe I should... (laughs) Maybe I should still take one at night before bed. Uh, but uh, it is getting better. But everything was bugging me last night, and I just couldn't sleep. So it, 
I've been stretching all morning, still trying to wake up. So hopefully uh, you're up and bright and having a great time and ready to take on the world <laughs> and maybe even do a little wine tasting. Uh, it is the weekend after all, so why not visit some local Central Coast wineries? Or if you're listening up in the Bay Area, you could head to any number of uh, locations up that direction, really up and down all throughout California now. There's a, there's a wine region for everyone. Okay, as mentioned in a couple of my trivia questions earlier this hour, California's mission system system was founded in the late 17 and early 1800s along the coast from San Diego all the way to just north of San Francisco. And I think as Patty, uh, one of her questions, 21 missions in all, plus a few uh, outbuildings uh, like uh, Santa Margarita Ranch is one of those. And as uh, Father Junipra Serra and his team established the locations. That's my attempt to sound like I can speak another language, but I don't. Uh, they also planted grapes to make wine as they were establishing these places. And those original grape lines brought over from Spain are mostly gone as tastes for Cabernet and Rhone varietals, Pinot, Chardonnay, among others, have overtaken the industry. But... A few strands still remain, and one, Santa Barbara County Vintner is using the original Mission Grapes, as they're called, to make some very highly rated wine. Deborah Hall with Gypsy Canyon Winery joins us in studio now to give us a couple of lessons on history and winemaking. Welcome, Deborah. Good morning, Randall. Happy to be here today. Yeah, so glad that you could make the trip. Uh, we appreciate you coming in studio for My sure. Pleasure. I had to bring in the wine. You've got to know what you're talking about. Because so. we can't do that over the phone, right? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> exactly. uh, now, I am really excited about this because when I started reading some of the history behind it, the Mission Grapes had somewhat been all but lost for the most part, and then they started popping up, and you found some some vines on your property. Right, quite by accident. Uh, we, we were cleaning up to uh, plant some Pinot, you know, a hot new varietal, and we discovered a vine and another, another realized we had a whole hillside. It turned out to be three acres. Um, they were first identified as Zinfandel. So I was selling the, group, the grapes for a couple of years as Old Vine Zen, and then we did some DNA testing and found out they were Mission grapes. Um, honestly, I was really disappointed because I thought I had Old Vine Zen, which is really, <laughs> really cool to have. Right. Right. Um, and I thought, Mission, oh my gosh, what do you do with old Mission grapes? So I thought, well, the Padres had the most experience with this varietal. Yeah. So going down to the Santa Barbara Mission, the archives library there, the fabulous resource. All the um, correspondence between the fathers, the books, everything's gathered right down in Santa Barbara. Ah. Um, so going through all their wine making notes, they would write back and forth to each other talking about their methods and what they liked and didn't like. Did but you have it, to stomp the grapes with your feet? Yeah. Well, no, no. no. They, <laughs> <laughs> they did, absolutely. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of the coolest restored bodegas is up at the San Antonio Mission, if you ever get a chance to check it out. it's They used gravity feed back then where they stomped the grapes, and there's a little hole in the vat that goes down to the cellar, oh. and they would just put the barrel right under the hole in the cellar, and it would just go right into the barrel. It's very cool. Really? And open yeah. to all the air and all yes. the microorganisms yes. that would be floating around as well, so you can't be super exact about what yeast you might get in your wine, okay. They used whatever they had. Yeah, yeah. It was all native yeast. Um, yeah. And so, so how with the now that you're using the mission grapes, do you use a specific yeast or do you do it the same way? Uh, no, it's more controlled. I have mm. um, only the three acres, so I'll get about one barrel a year, maybe you know almost a ton if I'm lucky. Um, so I can't take a chance with native yeast that might throw it off. I need right. to c control it a little. What more. a waste that would be, right? But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, I do it pretty much uh, by their recipe. Um, we harvest and. Take the, it's a thick red skin grape. Big loose clusters can weigh up to a pound each. It's really gorgeous when you see them on the old vines. Um, so we just bring it straight into the winery, take the juice off the skins right away, press it, and then uh, start fermentation. And about halfway through, they made a lot of brandy back then, so mm -hmm. they would fortify. It's a fortified dessert wine. I see. So they would fortify it with their brandy. Ah. Um, so I have to fortify it with high-proof grape spirits, okay. uh, which just does the same thing. So uh, that kills the yeast, stops the fermentation, and then you have your residual sugar sugar of about 9% and alcohol at about 18%. And then I'll age it for four years in neutral French oak. Oh. They didn't have new oak back then. Right. And the barrels, there's some headspace. I age it for four years, surlies on the lees, and never top it. So the headspace is part of the oxidation process that actually improves the wine. Now, what's the difference between a high-proof grape spirit and brandy? It's, um, it's just... 
wine made from grapes that's been distilled. Okay, so but not aged in barrels and that sort of thing, so that's right. why it doesn't have the right, brandy right. characteristics. I actually um, did some cuttings from the mission and tried to make my own brandy. But oh. what, what happens, by the time you double distill a 60-gallon barrel of wine... There's not a lot left? You get six <laughs> gallons. Yeah, that would take right. a lot of acreage. Uh, yeah, well, those bottles would be extremely <laughs> so, expensive. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Uh, so, Deborah, uh, I'm wondering, I assume that the grape has characteristics of Zinfandel because you thought it was an old fine Zinfandel. W- would mm-hmm. that be the varietal you would most closely re- you would most closely uh, describe the Mission grapes as being? Um, no, actually, through DNA testing, they've actually linked them to a couple of grapes out of Spain, a Liston Pietro and a Criolla grape, okay. and even a Pais grape. They right. and also um, may think that it may have been hybrid with the native grape. California native grape. So now, for people that are watching this broadcast uh, online or via the uh, the smartphone apps, uh, we do have some pictures from your website from the 2009 harvest. Are those the oh, Mission grapes great. that are in that picture, or are that they- was the Pinot? That's the Pinot, okay, mm-hmm. that, that are there. Harvesting, yeah. Um, but it looks like a beautiful uh, property. You're located in the Santa Rita Hills? Exactly, yes, just off of Highway 246 um, in the northwestern region of Santa Rita Hills. And that is actually, you know, they grew the Mission grape at every mission. So if you have a wine that was grown in San Gabriel, it's a lot warmer, and you're going to have a completely different grape ah. that's grown in Santa Rita Hills. Right. And so the advantage is it's hard to ripen. However, it hangs on to a beautiful... Beautiful natural acidity, all of it here. I just poured you a little sip if you want to try this. I do, thank you. And a little bit of five year vintage Gouda is really a wonderful pairing. Oh. So take a bit <laughs> hey, of that. I like so. this. Where did you get the Gouda? Uh, this is from the Beverly Hills Cheese Store. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm feeling like extra special this morning. I love it. <laughs> Good thing I had breakfast. Uh, so um, I'm wondering uh, the Santa Rita Hills, they are considered to be one of the prime Central Coast growing. People source their grapes from there for a, for specific characteristics. And what would you say would be the overriding characteristics of grapes from the Santa Rita Hills? Well, it's known for its beautiful Pinot. And because mm-hmm. of geographically how it's set up, it allows a long, cool growing season, which allows the Pinot to develop its wonderful flavors that it come and the soils, of course. Ter- it's all about terroir. Mm. I've got to tell you, I don't know if it's the combination with the cheese or what, but I'm tasting a lot of car- caramel or caramel, depending mm-hmm. on <laughs> where you're from, how you mm-hmm. want to pronounce that. But it it tastes like candy. I mean, like candy, but not overly sweet. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, 9% residual sugar and the 18 alcohol seems to be a nice balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, not sweet enough to really go with dessert, but it's a sipping wine, and having this with a little cheese after dinner, you're set. You yeah. Know, uh, I'm going to, I need to focus on this cheese a little bit too. Okay. This is fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. What's the brand name? It's a five year vintage Gouda. And if you ever need to do any pairing, you see Tony at the Beverly Hills Cheese Shop. He's got a fabulous palette for pairing the cheese and wine. I'm going to have to put yeah. a link to that on our program summary because uh, when a cheese blows me out of the water like that, I, I want to share it with our listeners. Yeah, it has it's a wonderful textural surprise and then the saltiness with the sweetness yeah. of the wine is You didn't great, get a so. chance to have some with your uh, tasting I've, it. I've had quite a bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So where can people find this? Um, directly through my website. I currently have a wait list, but I'll have a new release this fall. Okay. And then just sign up for the wait list through the website. And your website is gypsycanyon.com, correct? That's it. mm-hmm. It's that's so easy. And, yes. And of course we have a link that to that as well. Just yeah. head to eat if you're listening and you're thinking, I wanna access all these things. EatDrinkExplore.com. You just go to the radio tab, and when you hover over that, a uh, drop down menu is there, and it right, says right there Program Summaries Guest Information. Just click on that, and you'll see today's uh, listing and uh, all of the guests you heard today. You'll find links there, including Deborah Hall with Gypsy Canyon Winery and her fabulous Mission Grape Varietal. What, uh, what is the name? Uh, do you call it? It's not called it's, Mission Grape. It's actually called Ancient Vine Angelica. And, and it was named, it was coined Angelica by the San Gabriel Mission. Oh. They named the city of Los Angeles the City of Angels. Yeah. So. Oh, I like that connection. They made quite a bit of it at the San Gabriel Mission. Uh-huh. Are you from Southern California originally? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Moved up here to kind of retire, ended up in a whole new business and busier than ever. <laughs> That's so. how it happens, right? <laughs> yeah. But it, would you say that the whole thing is true? Uh, find something you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. So. Oh, absolutely. It's a wonderful lifestyle. I could never imagine going back. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I'll it, do. Yeah, you'd never retire. And yeah. it's such a short trip yeah. down to see all your friends and family and stuff that you may have left down in uh, down in the L.A. area. So. Yeah, it's nicer to bring them up here. Right. <laughs> 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 but you do have to, unless the Beverly Hills Cheese Market ships, I guess you do step. They do. Oh, they do. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> That's easy. Overnight. Easy as it is. Okay, Deborah Hall with Gypsy Canyon Winery. That's gypsycanyon.com. Thank you for bringing the sample taste. My Love pleasure. it so much. Look for their Angelica on the website. You can order it that way. There's a waiting list, though, and after tasting it, I understand why. All right, up next, everyone, we are taking you along the northern stretch of the original Mission Route as one group of women are currently on horseback at this moment, as a matter of fact, uh, following the Mission Trail and discovering great food and history along the way. In fact, there's a couple of stops. If you're a foodie and you really want to check out some old time recipes from when the missions were being founded, they'll be tasting those in both San Jose and Santa Cruz. We'll get their complete story in just a moment. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network, a Central Coast live broadcast. We're back in just a moment. The historic Santa Margarita Ranch, exactly halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles off Highway 101, was founded in the mid-1700s and served as an assistant mission to the nearby Catholic headquarters in San Luis Obispo. The 14,000 acres that make up the ranch today have served a variety of purposes over the years, including grazing land for large herds of Mexican cattle, prime vineyard land, and this fall will once again host the main event for Sunset, Savor the Central Coast, Saturday, September 29th, and Sunday, September 30th. This will be your location to meet some of the top chefs from the Central Coast, as well as nationally recognized culinary celebrities. Several chef demonstrations will be featured, including The Battle of the Bay, hosted by Emmy Award winner, author, and host of Food Network's Chop, Ted Allen. To purchase tickets and for a full listing of activities from Thursday through Sunday, head to SaversCentralCoast.com. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. This is Betty White. I know you don't need one more thing to worry about, but listen. High blood pressure can cause kidney damage, blindness, heart attack, stroke. And you can have high blood pressure even if you feel all right. One in seven adults has it, but it's easy to get your blood pressure checked, and you can treat it if it is too high. So don't worry about it. Don't ignore it. Just see your doctor and check it out. For your free booklet, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back shortly. Did you know our weekly Saturday morning radio show also has a video simulcast on Ustream? You can watch it live or view pre-recorded versions while on the go by simply downloading our free Eat, Drink, Explore app for your smartphone or tablet device. To find it, just head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and search Eat, Drink, Explore. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. Curious about information you've heard on today's show? Just head to eatdrinkexplore.com and head to the weekly program summary section under the radio tab. We always list the websites and any other important facts associated with each of our guests we have on the program.
The Eat Drink Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. And welcome back to the final segment now of the Eat, Drink, Explore radio show. We are in hour two. It's 949. I'm your host, Randall White. And of course, this is the Compass Hour, our word mission. We've had so much fun over the hour. And our past guest, Deborah, with Gypsy Canyon Winery, um, I just want to, sh- if you're watching this and not, if you're uh checking out the broadcast with the video. I just want to hold this bottle up to the camera. It is such a beautiful bottle. We didn't show it during the interview, uh, but this is their Angelica. uh, And I just want to thank Deborah again for letting us taste this because it's such a special historic wine and I loved it. And it is hopefully a spot that our next guest will make it to as they travel uh, down the entire coast. Now, As we mentioned in the last segment, the Spanish missionaries established a string of 21 missions in California more than 200 years ago. And from what was now the border of Mexico through the Bay Area, a group of women from Northern California asked themselves what would happen if they rode from mission to mission, Patty Pyburn, on horseback. Could it even be done today? You know, because right. some of the missions are uh, surrounded by urban. Most of the missions are surrounded now by <laughs> urban areas. What an undertaking. I know. Well, they're currently finding out exactly how easy or difficult, uh, whatever the case may be, it is to do that. And making an educational documentary film about the entire journey. Leslie Dutton Downer. She's a writer and writer. <laughs> R-I-D-E-R and W-R-I-T-E-R for the California Mission Ride. She joins us about the experience. And by the way, foodie stops in the coming days in both San Jose and Santa Cruz. Both stops the public is invited to take part in as we understand it. Welcome, Leslie. Hi there, Randall. Well, I understand that you are calling from a stable right now. That's where you found access to a landline. That's correct. I'm calling you. I'm in a horse ranch on on a cliff uh, overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Wow. Very beautiful with a trail that goes right down from the horse ranch onto the beach. And we're camping here for two nights. Oh, nice. As we visit the mission in San Francisco, Mission Dolores. Mission Dolores. And one of our guests this hour was uh, from the Mission District there, which is named Mission District after uh, Mission Dolores. Now, you are headed to San Jose first, correct? San Jose after this mission? Yes, our next stop will be in Santa Clara, Mission Santa Clara, and then we will go to Mission San Jose. But um, as as many people don't know, apparently, Mission San Jose is not in San Jose. It's in Fremont. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah I didn't know that either. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, it's in Fremont, and there will be an event the public can can come to there, correct? Yes. In, in Mission San Jose, there will be a dinner uh, we're having a roundtable event. We have events at every mission. We go to a different kind of event, um, and the, all of them have uh, elements that are free and open to the public. Um, at uh, Mission San Jose, we will have a, a roundtable discussion with different people there, and then afterwards there will be a dinner, um, a special mission barbecue with all kinds of delicious things being cooked up for us. And then um, after that, our next mission stop will be in Santa Cruz, where we also have a wonderful organic um, dinner planned that people can come to and um, there will be wonderful uh, entertainment at that event and it will be a mixture of Native American and Spanish uh, elements to kind of pay homage to the two traditions that were involved in building and and, um, you know establishing the missions. So Leslie I imagine you've had quite an amazing journey. Um, Can you give us like maybe what is your so far all-time best moment? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That's going to be a tough one, huh? (laughs) It's impossible to tell you because we've just had so many highlights. Our crew, you know, we have a very tight crew. My friend, my teenage friend from Santa Cruz and I, Gwyneth, uh, and I dreamed up this um, thing. We've got some great people on our crew and and, and riding with us, so it's just been absolutely fantastic. We're having a great time. Every minute is a highlight. Every minute is just beautiful, and we can't quite believe we're doing it. It's like a dream. We feel like our horses are just moving in clouds because... We haven't settled down to realize this is actually happening. We, after dreaming it up several years ago and being told by various people, you know, it would be impossible, it's, it's actually unfolding. But I'll tell you one highlight. 
Uh, well, one was uh, coming out of the Sonoma barracks in Sonoma. That was riding out in, uh, into the plaza in Sonoma. Is that where you started? That's Wait, is... where we started. Okay. And we just peeled out of those barracks, and it was just the most, the biggest thrill. And the other thing is, yesterday, um, or day before yesterday, we were riding up Mount Tam, and when we got to the top, there was a group of people. There was a family there celebrate. They were celebrating a wedding, and they were having. I guess the couple was having a, a kind of honeymoon um, up uh, at the summit there in this beautiful inn, um, the West Point Inn, and um, they had all their friends up there, and we were riding by, and they just, they said, oh, you're the mission riders, oh my God. Oh, they knew. Uh, yeah, yeah, they knew who we were, <laughs> and they said, come on up, and they, they shared some of their, their newlywed uh, celebration dinner with us and, and beer, and we just had a great moment up there hanging out with them. And How so fun! A lot of unprogrammed time like that is really special because, you know, we just meet people along the trail and stop and hear about their lives and talk to them, and that's been, those are the real highlights, I think, for everybody. Less Leslie and gang crashed a wedding reception. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And so how many how many women are on this uh, venture? Well, Gwyneth and I, and then we have, um, you know, we were the ones who, who kind of um, uh, got it got it rolling, and we have um, Rod Rondeau, who's not a woman. He's a Native American, um, probably one of the greatest uh, horse stuntmen in the country, uh-huh. uh, Crow Cheyenne Indian. And um, we have Troy uh, Van Gorder, who's a horse trainer from the East Coast, who's never been to California. This is his first time. So everything that he's seeing is, uh, he didn't even know what a mission was when he got here. And I, <laughs> I told know. him, I said, you know, I said, Troy, when this trip is over, the name Father Junipero Serra is going to be just as familiar to you as Paul Revere. And he said, <laughs> who? <laughs> like, he didn't even know who that was. Uh, uh, and, of right. course, now he's about to go today. In about an hour, we're going to go down to uh, Mission Dolores, and that will be our third mission. We have some great events planned there today open to the public and um so by now of course you know he, troy is beginning to understand a little bit more about the missions and by the end of this uh trip this year i, mean, I think think he'll be pretty familiar with um you know all the key players and the history of the missions yeah leslie we only have one minute left and i'm wondering how much of a challenge has it been to travel through these cities are the p- local police departments working with you yeah, we've had a lot of help from the police in different places, including San Francisco and Fremont, and um, um, lots of help from uh, Backcountry Horsemen of California, amazing group of people um, who volunteer many, many hours to help mm-hmm. keep the trails clear. Um, lots of, uh, you know, it's different in every city. We have different issues to deal with in every city. Yeah. Tomorrow will be... Um, going uh, through watershed area in San Mateo. So oh, that's beautiful that's along there. Yeah, so we have, you know, each each place has its own, you know, set of things to deal with. Well, Leslie Dunton Downer, a writer and writer for the California Mission Ride. That's Cal- thecaliforniamissionride.com. We have a lot of listeners in San Jose and Santa Cruz, two of your upcoming stops. You can find information if you would like to join in on some of this with the good food and even the dancing there in Santa Cruz. Uh, you can find it on our website, eatdrinkexplore.com. Leslie, thank you so much, and good thanks, luck on Randall. the rest of the ride. Okay, thanks a million. Oh, all righty. So this hour was brought to you by Eberly Winery, where you will always find, always, complimentary wine tasting located on Highway 46 East. That is in Paso Robles. You can log on to Weber, or Weberly. <laughs> Eberly. See, I've already tra- tasted some of the Angelica wine. So uh, it is Eberly. Winery.com. That's E B E R L E. Another fantastic show. If you missed any of it, you can always catch the full broadcast. Online, just a little bit after the show. It takes us a moment to uh, repost it at eatdrinkexplore.com. Make it a wonderful, fantastic day, everyone. We'll catch you again soon. And hello, Crush 92.5 listeners. This is your exclusive minute (laughs) wrap-up. And just a big reminder right now that starting next week, You will not catch us here on Saturday. You will catch us on Sunday morning. Same time, though, uh, 8 to 10 o'clock every Sunday morning as we broadcast live throughout the entire Central Coast from the South Bay of uh, the Bay Area all the way through northern Santa Barbara County. Uh, You can catch Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. And, of course, if you're in the San Luis Obispo area, you hear that on Crush 92.5. 
thank you to Anthony Renaro for working the sound today. Also, Patty Pyburn for doing the news. Our wonderful Nicole Powers, who's been with us all summer long, reporting hard at work, uh, delivered our one of our news pieces this morning, and we thank her so much for her work here on the show and hopefully uh, continued work on the show. Uh, Cora Adamo working the phones, and Ricardo Teodosio doing all the video work if you're watching online. Okay, everyone, it's Saturday. Make it a great weekend. Go out and see those whales at Avila Beach. We'll catch you back here next week.